Chapter 14, Shadow vs. Light Joe almost felt strange leading Karen to her home. Sure, she'd done the same thing the night before, but this felt different. They were alone this time, for one, and the two of them were looking to talk to Kimmy, which would mean introducing Karen properly to Joe's mom. It conjured up thoughts of some hypothetical alternate version of the world where Karen was Joe's girlfriend rather than just her ally, where this was a completely different milestone. It made Joe nervous for reasons that were entirely ridiculous, and yet, even as they entered the house together, she couldn't put her apprehension out of mind. It's this way, Joe told her companion. She led Karen through the living room to a large sliding glass door to the backyard, which stood wide open, letting in a warm summer breeze, carrying soft voices upon it, though it was impossible to make out what they were saying. Joe and Karen moved to stand together in the open doorway before stepping through. Outside, roughly in the center of the large, flat, rectangular lawn, Shannon stood with her arms crossed, facing away from them, watching another girl run through her forms. Joe and Karen approached the two of them as they talked. That's Kimiko, in a way, Joe told Karen, gesturing toward the practicing girl. She goes by Kimmy for short. She's the one we're here to test, Karen inquired. Your mom's apprentice. Yeah, Joe confirmed, watching the slight girl move effortlessly around the allotted training area at speeds that tested even Joe's well-trained eyes. Her straight, shoulder-length black hair trailing behind her. She doesn't look very imposing, Joe explained, but she and I have been training off and on since the last time you and I fought. We haven't gone all out against each other yet, but she's just as tough as either of us in her own ways. Her style doesn't seem very offensive, Karen assessed, making use of her ability to form a complete picture of another's fighting style in seconds. It's not, Joe agreed. She mostly focuses on avoiding attacks until she finds an opening, but she has a lot of great utility techniques. She's even almost as good a healer as my mom already, and she's only been learning for about a year. As Joe spoke, Kimmy skidded to a stop in the center of the training space, it turned to face Shannon, and bowed slightly. Then she looked past Shannon at Joe and Karen and smiled and waved at them in a warm and friendly way that only someone as sunny and optimistic as Kimmy could pull off. Joe smiled back, but she didn't know Kimmy well enough to show quite so much enthusiasm. She wasn't a pessimist or anything, she was definitely the kind of person who could get herself psyched up when she had very little reason to be, but super bubbly people like Kimmy still put her off more than she liked to admit. When Kimmy smiled at Joe, Shannon saw her do so and turned to see Joe and Karen standing there. As she did, much like the night before, a wave of tension rolled off of the regal, middle-aged woman. This time, Joe was sure that she felt it, but it was gone just as quickly as it had come, and then Shannon was smiling at them as well. Joe put the sensation out of mind, assuming that Shannon was simply remembering the start that she had suffered the previous night when she had found Karen in the house without warning. Hello, girls, Shannon greeted them. Hey, Mom, Joe replied. She gestured to Karen. You remember my friend? Karen, right? Shannon asked, walking over to meet them. Yeah, Karen replied, the cheeky, competitive grin that Joe knew so well spreading across her face as she spoke. Sorry for last night, she told Shannon. I didn't mean to freak you out. It's water under the bridge, Shannon insisted, but Joe still got the sense that Shannon was put off by Karen's presence. Thankfully, this solved Joe's awkwardness problem immediately. She wanted Shannon to like Karen, so, almost compulsively, she took it upon herself to talk the other girl up. Karen, Joe said, is super strong. She and I met a couple months ago, and even though we didn't get along right away, we're friends now, in part because the heart-to-heart -heart we had back then was probably the most fun I ever had. Really? Karen asked Joe, smirking at her. Joe looked away from Karen nervously. Yeah, for sure. To her mom, she said, Anyway, Karen was wondering if she could sit in on training today. She is really interested in your techniques, and since Kimmy uses them, and I have plans to spar with Kimmy. You feel that seeing Joe and Kimmy fight will give you a pretty good sense of how effective my techniques are, Shannon said to Karen, interrupting her daughter. Something like that, Karen confirmed, still smirking. Of course, she and Joe couldn't tell Shannon about the ring, or the test, or what Joe and Karen really wanted, or who Karen really was. This was the best lie that the two girls had been able to come up with, mostly because it wasn't entirely untrue. Karen was very interested in how strong Shannon was. It was a toss-up, though, if Shannon would go for it. She didn't usually like to show off her techniques to individuals like this. She was proud of the skills that she'd developed, but she preferred that those techniques speak for themselves in action, in an official capacity. Joe crossed her fingers as Shannon thought over the request. It took less time than she expected for Shannon to shrug and look to Kimmy, asking, You are right with this? Yeah, sure, Kimmy replied, still smiling as she stepped up to Shannon's side, dabbing sweat from her face and neck with a towel. All right, Shannon said, nodding. Then pair off. We'll treat this like a proper heart-to-heart, -heart, a referee. Joe was more nervous than she should have been as she watched Kimmy walk back to the training mat. 
It struck her that she was about to fight in front of Shannon and Karen, two people whose opinions of her meant the world, against the girl who had become her mom's protege instead of Joe herself. She couldn't allow herself to slip up here. She glanced over at Karen, who sat down in the grass, leaning back on her hands. She shot Joe a supportive smile, and Joe drew strength from that. Joe psyched herself up, checked that she was wearing the little silver ring on its chain around her neck, and sent her soul down her legs into the shadow beneath her. She blinked out of view, appearing at almost the same exact moment at the far end of the fighting area, just as Kimmy stepped into position. Joe shifted into a back stance, and Kimmy stepped into a cat stance, modified to be a bit lower to the ground than normal. She looked ready to pounce, but also flexible, as if she could change stances at a moment's notice. In fact, the versatility of her stance was one of the first things that Kimmy had learned from Shannon, just as Joe had. Shannon assessed the two girls, recognizing immediately that they were both ready to fight. You may begin, she announced. Kimmy made the first move. She sent her soul into her legs and launched herself forward, strafing back again and zipping rapidly and randomly throughout her half of the fighting stage. Every time she changed direction, she left a latent image of herself where she had been, but with an added twist. A side effect of moving using her soul was that Kimmy seemed to shimmer like an illusion. Combined with the latent images, she was almost impossible to pin down. She's going all out today, Joe thought. Kimmy had a light soul, like the girl Mina that Jen and her group were encountering at almost that exact moment, but Kimmy's specific light soul was unique. It was, perhaps, the purest light soul that had ever existed, and was the primary reason that Shannon had agreed to train her. It had a lot of unique properties that most other fighters couldn't replicate. The odd shimmering was one of those properties, and despite not really understanding why it happened, it was one that Shannon had helped Kimmy to hone. Now, she could get in close to almost any opponent unimpeded, assess their stance, and attack any openings in their guard, and there was only one concrete defense against it. Ever since learning how to use her sixth sense, Joe's skill with the technique had improved, but she still had trouble sensing the exact position of others when they were moving so quickly. Even with her healing aura up, increasing the amount of life energy that she could pump out into the battlefield, Joe wouldn't be able to follow Kimmy's movements perfectly. Despite this, Joe still sent her life energy out into the area that was charged by the clashing of the two fighters' energies. She felt it ping against Kimmy's life energy as Kimmy zipped erratically about, leaving her with the impression that Kimmy was bearing down on her, aiming to attack from the side. She shuffled back as the smaller girl struck with her palm, which was charged with her shining yellow soul, avoiding the attack by less than an inch, saving her soul from being weakened. If Kimmy was surprised that her attack had failed, she didn't show it. She pressed her attack, using her substantial speed to circle her opponent, switching from her own more evasive style to an upfront style that she had learned from Shannon. All while that bothersome shimmering persisted. Joe frowned. Her sixth sense would be far less useful now that her opponent was near enough to attack without moving any closer first. She was forced to avoid attacks from Kimmy and her optical illusions. Shadow stepping in relative place, just enough to sidestep each of Kimmy's strikes one after another with as little effort as possible. As she dodged hit after hit, Joe sent pulses of soul out beyond her hands, slinging them off of her fingers in dozens of random directions. They spiraled, shaping into spherical blasts that resembled her soul breaker, though these were much smaller and far less densely packed with energy. They each packed a punch about on par with one of Joe's actual punches, which wouldn't hurt Kimmy much, but would knock her off balance if they hit her. Kimmy saw the barrage of attacks erupting from her opponent and she hesitated. She slowed just enough for Joe to make out clearly where she was, at which point Joe sent Soul out into the air and caught two of her blasts with the force of her will, causing them to bend toward her opponent one after another. They were on top of Kimmy before she could move, but that didn't mean that she couldn't react to them at all. Kimmy sent her own soul out into the path of the more distant of the two blasts, and it crystallized into a shimmering yellow orb that broke on impact with the blast, but bounced the blast away harmlessly. Then she reached with her hands, both of them glowing with her bright yellow soul, and she cupped them around the closer of the two blasts. She sent her light soul into it, and due to the nature of light soul, it cancelled the blast out in an instant. It was impressive, but not really surprising. Kimmy renewed her attack instantly. This time, rather than send her light soul into her hands, she sent it beyond them. She danced nimbly around Joe, still accompanied by her many optical illusions, and swiped at her opponent, sending her soul out in wide arcs that diminished in strength, but grew wider the further they strayed from their source. Joe was able to shadow step around the brunt of the blast, but stray ribbons of energy still passed through her, stripping small portions of her own soul away, weakening her ever so slightly each and every time. It wasn't by much, but Joe began to slow down, enough that Kimmy was able to get inside her guard. She dropped low and spun, sweeping Joe's feet out from under her. Then she thrust a glowing palm at the falling Joe, nailing her in the center of her chest, sending light soul passing right through the place where a person's internal soul is located inside their body, 
Joe was knocked back by the impact, rolling along the lumpy mat, a good chunk of her available soul dissipating into the air. Even though the hit had been quite damaging, Joe didn't stay down even long enough for Shannon to begin the count. She sprang back up even before she'd finished rolling. As she did, Kimmy stepped back uncertainly. She hadn't expected Joe to get right up, and so she hadn't been prepared for the fight to go on without even a brief interruption. Joe saw this and took advantage, shadow stepping to Kimmy's side and driving her knee into the other girl's stomach. Kimmy stumbled back and Joe pursued her. She shadow stepped again, jabbing Kimmy in the jaw with her left fist, stepped again and threw a kick at the side of Kimmy's head that the smaller girl barely managed to duck in time. Joe shadow stepped yet again, circling her opponent rapidly and continuously. Soon, all that Kimmy could see from her perspective was a ring of indistinct shifting shadows and the slight trail of purple static that sparked along Joe's path. Joe was building up momentum, meaning to strike Kimmy one more time so hard that she wouldn't be able to keep herself in bounds, whether she defended or not. Seeing the danger, Kimmy took a play from Joe's book. She turned on her heels, spinning in place, slinging Soul out past her hands, sending it out in bolts. They didn't fly as straight as Joe's blasts had, but that ended up being a point in Kimmy's favor. Joe tried to shadow step right past them and begin her assault, but because they were so erratic, she miscalculated, and one of the blasts struck her in the leg. The soul strengthening that leg was stripped away, and she stumbled. While she was able to catch herself in less than a second, that was more than enough time for Kimmy to get in close again. Kimmy danced around Joe, striking a half dozen times in rapid succession, aiming for the specific pressure points throughout Joe's body, knocking her around, canceling out more of Joe's soul, and leaving a bit of her own in its place to gum up the works. Joe could dislodge it by building up more of her own soul and filling her body up with it, but that would take significantly more time and effort than usual with Kimmy's soul in the way. Kimmy hadn't beat Joe yet, but she had set herself up well to do so. While Joe was still reeling from the sudden loss of her strength, Kimmy appeared suddenly within her opponent's guard. She sent soul into her arms and thrust with all of her strength, striking Joe once again in the chest. Joe stumbled back, struggling just to stay upright, powerless to do anything while Kimmy reached down, touched the ground at her feet, and declared, Life from the earth! Instantly, Kimmy was infused with a massive amount of life energy. She was wreathed in golden light, her few injuries healing as she filtered that energy through her soul, amplifying that soul several times over. Unlike Sarah, Kimmy didn't have the perfect control needed to hang on to all of that energy, so she seized hold of a portion of it just enough to fuel her next attack and let the rest flow into the ground beneath her feet, her golden halo flickering and fading along with it. As she stood back up to her full height, Kimmy brought her hands together, palms forward, and thrust them at her opponent, soul collected within her palms, charging them with the yellow light. She called out a phrase that Joe learned later was Japanese for a ray of light, and a continuous beam of pure, shimmering light soul burst forth from her hands. A light soul attack that powerful would strip all of Joe's soul away and leave her burned out for days, and it came so quickly that it was upon Joe before she had even recovered her footing. Luckily for Joe, her instincts kicked in. Even as she stumbled, she bore down on her energies, willing them to move through her body, casting off the soul that Kimmy had left behind, and then willed those same energies to mix, just long enough for her aura to spring into place around her. At that same moment, Joe sent a huge amount of soul cascading down her right arm and into her hand. It condensed down and formed a swirling orb of soul about the size of a softball. Joe held that orb, that soul breaker, out in front of her, pumping more soul into it even as her well of soul threatened to dry up. She had to hold her energies together to do so, even as her aura still burned around her. She almost lost control of the immense quantities of energy flowing through her, more than once, and yet it worked. The spiraling soul breaker created a vortex of soul between Joe and her opponent's attack, holding the beam at bay. The soul breaker diminished as the light soul in Kimmy's blast stripped it away, but Joe kept the attack going by feeding more soul into it. After several long seconds, Kimmy expended the energy that she had harnessed from her life from the earth, and her ray of light petered out. It was just in time, too, as Joe's stamina was mere moments from reaching its absolute limit, to the point that she thought that she might pass out. In spite of this, Joe still held her soul breaker in her hand. She tossed it, just as her aura collapsed, accompanied by an audible, pained gasp. The soul breaker spiraled violently toward Kimmy, who had also been winded by the recent exchange. This time, she was the one who couldn't avoid her opponent's lightning-fast technique, but just as she had against Joe's earlier blasts, she cupped her hands in the path of the attack as it grew close, sending light soul past her palms, attempting to cancel the soul breaker out. Joe smiled. While Kimmy's defensive technique would have worked on most other blasts, the soul breaker was too concentrated for that. 
Kimmy caught the blast, pumping her light soul into it, but only managed to get the size of the swirling orb down by about half. With a final gasp of strength, Kimmy managed to deflect the soul breaker past her, but by then it was too late. The force of the blast had pushed her back. She was already teetering on the boundary of the training mat. Joe, unable to dredge up even one more spark of soul, charged forward with nothing but her body's own strength, nearly tripping over her own feet, and kicked her opponent in the stomach. Kimmy stumbled back and over the line, even as Joe dropped to her knees in exhaustion. Meanwhile, the deflected soul breaker spiraled around, shooting off in the general direction of Karen, Shannon, and the house behind them. Karen ignored it as it passed over her head, but only because she knew that she didn't need to worry about it. Before the blast could pass through the open sliding glass doors and topple the house from the inside out, Shannon appeared directly in its path, her arms crossed. Moving so fast that she didn't seem to move at all, she gestured, and with a flash, the blast was cut in half and dissipated. Waves of soul poured from where it had been, but Shannon was unshaken. Karen ignored what was going on behind her, even as the destruction of the blast stirred her long hair. After all, she was far more interested in Joe and the object hanging around her neck. Since the final clash between Joe and Kimmy's attacks, the stone in the little silver ring had been flickering red. It was almost as exciting to Karen as the fight itself had been. Needless to say, Shannon declared as Kimmy stood up, dusted herself off, and helped her opponent to her feet. The heart-to-heart -heart goes to Joe Seeker. She walked over and gave Joe a side hug. Great job, sweetie. That last attack in particular was really something. Joe couldn't help but smile, Shannon's words giving her the warm fuzzies. Thanks, Mom, she replied. Then she peeled herself away from her mother's grip. I need to talk to Kimmy for a minute, though. Joe walked over to where Kimmy was still standing. As she walked, she mixed her energies again and wrapped herself in her healing aura, gasping as it began to restore her stamina. Karen knew that she intended to invite Kimmy to the same meetup that they had invited M to less than an hour ago. Joe didn't need Karen with her to make the invitation, so rather than join her, Karen stepped up beside Shannon. They didn't look at each other, but they did converse. Your daughter is pretty great, Karen began. Yeah, Shannon agreed, she is. I'm very proud of her. She's grown a lot, even without my guidance. No matter what enemy you put in front of her, she always rises to their level. Not for the first time, Karen felt a wave of angry tension roll off of Shannon and splash over her. Karen frowned. It was clear that Shannon was talking about her. Karen was more sure now than ever that Shannon knew exactly who she was, at least as much as Karen knew who Shannon really was. So she decided to set pretenses aside and address the matter. I'm not her enemy, she explained, her tone apologetic, but insistent. At least not anymore. She inspired me to do something crazy. Something nearly as crazy as one of the original six masters hiding in the open as a teacher. Shannon flinched, and if Karen hadn't been sure who Shannon was before, she was now. I was a seeker for our... She paused, flinching herself this time. I mean, for their leader. I know his whole list of special targets by heart. I spied on Joe and Sarah and the people around them in preparation for my group's first confrontation with them. I've suspected who you really are since then. She looked over at Shannon with reverence. He wants you so badly. There's only one other person he wants more, but even he hasn't talked about as much as you, since no one in the organization actually knows what you can do. But the fact that I know who you are is proof that I'm not with them anymore. If I was, I would have told them my suspicions and brought all of the Soul Takers with me in force to take Joe and the others and you all at once. Karen waited, but Shannon didn't say anything. Conflict marred the older woman's expression, making it clear that Karen hadn't convinced her yet. She'd been too harsh. She needed to dial it back. I wanted an out for so long, Karen concluded, but I never found one until I met Joe. She didn't even mean to do it, but she finally convinced me and my two friends to take the leap of faith that it was the defect, and now we're working together. We're going to make this world a safer place. It does sound like Joe, Shannon replied, her expression softening, overtaken by a wry smile that remained for only a moment, replaced by a troubled frown. Joe's an inspiration to me too, she said, so I'm going to trust you, for now, that you aren't her enemy anymore and that you'll take care of her and her sister. No, though, that if this is some kind of trick, there won't be anywhere on earth where you're safe from me. This time it was Karen's turn to smile, the part of her that was still interested in a fight with Shannon getting the best of her in the moment. Oh, don't worry. I know, 